Okay, I don't really have anything in the way of announcements, but I'm just going to continue preaching on um, spanking. I'm going to go on to the alternatives of spanking. And then um, after I finish that, then I'll give you my thoughts on the whole Kent Hovind situation um, that's happening on Facebook and on YouTube. But um, let's just continue. So this is spanking your children too, going over alternatives and advantages to corporal punishment. Now, I'm not going to have much scripture to go through just because this is more the practical side of the, um, the spanking sermon, which I did last week, which had all the scripture in it. So just keep that in mind that I won't be turning to much scripture, just giving you some thoughts here about uh, alternatives to spanking, um, what the world tries to push as alternatives, and um, just some thoughts that I have on why I think spanking has advantages that the alternatives um, cannot, cannot do. So, you know, one thing you'll find is when you, when you read up about spanking and you read up about the whole idea of spanking versus alternatives or spanking versus timeouts and spanking versus removing privileges and people arguing about um, what is the most effective uh, form of discipline. I mean, we know from the Bible that the right form of discipline, you know, if you're a Bible-believing Christian, it doesn't really matter what you think is the most effective. There is a right way to do it because we are commanded in the Bible to use the rod, to, to beat the child with the rod, to drive foolishness from him. So even if we didn't have this reasoning, we as Bible-believing Christians should already know and believe, hey, God knows what's best. So if God gives me a method in which to discipline and raise my children, then I'm going to do that. I'm not going to claim to think that I know better than God, that I'm more loving than God, that I have better methods than God. Um, but it's good for us to, to think about these things as well, just to think, you know, I know God has told us, you know, this is how we are to do things, but it's, it's also good to know why, you know, and think about, you know, why is God's methods best? So then when you are talking with an unbeliever, you can give them some, some reasons as to why you do believe God's method is best. So one thing I find when I'm reading up about spanking and reading up about all these, um, these arguments on alternatives is there's generally a straw man that's represented to represent spanking. And, and what you'll find is when they, when, they, when they pitch these two ideas and they say, oh, spanking versus this, you need to ask the question, what do they mean by spanking? You know, what do they actually mean by spanking? Because the straw man that I usually find is they'll say it's spanking, like just spanking. So when they, 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 they build this straw man up that those of us who spank, that, that, like, as though that's all we do. Like we don't do anything else. We don't try any other methods. We don't try and educate our children. We don't try and have the right attitude about spanking. None of these things. It's just, you know, they've done something wrong. You spank and nothing else. And generally when they talk about spanking, it's usually it's defined as an open hand slap on the rear end. So it's not that they're even pulling down the shorts, spanking on bare skin. They're not using a rod. And you'll find that when you, when you read up a lot of, like there are, I, can't, I don't have all the references, I just remember reading up on this. And I would look at this study, this article that says, oh, you know, study shows that spanking you know, is not effective, blah, blah, blah. And then you read the article, and then the article will say something like, spanking in this, in this study was defined as an open hand slap on the rear end. So obviously, if, if that's how they're spanking their children, of course that's not going to be effective. It's not going to be effective if you're using an open hand slap because number one, it doesn't even really hurt them that much um, and, and provide enough pain to actually cause a deterrent. But the other straw man is, you know, besides the method of spanking, is they'll generally pitch it as spanking versus alternatives like timeouts, removing privileges and explanation. So it's almost like what they're pitching it against is, you know, is is as though those of us who spank do not try and educate our children, but the people that don't spank are there, you know, their alternatives if they try and explain and things like that. So that's a straw man because obviously those of us who spank, we also try and educate our children. We also are trying to explain things and give them the right frame of mind, tell them logical consequences and all these things that they bring up. Um, it's not like we're just spanking and just thinking that that's teaching them right and wrong and educating them, no. Um, we spank as a form of punishment that's the punishment we implement. The alternative is not education because we also do that too. We also educate our children as well as spank them. So the straw man is it's spanking versus removing privileges, for example, and, ex and an explanation. But the reality is, the, the argument is spanking versus educating, spanking and educating your children versus removing privileges and educating your children, like an, or timeouts or whatever. 
So that's the reality of it. So really it's a comparison of a punishment method, not a comparison on parenting philosophies because we all believe we ought to love our children, we all believe that we should be calm as parents, that we should not discipline out of anger, that uh, we ought to educate our children, spend time with them, you know, provide their needs, all these sorts of things. So these are not really legitimate alternatives to spanking because a spanking is a, a punishment when they actually do something wrong. You need to punish them somehow. Um, uh, not not uh, this whole idea of education and attitude and things like that. So a lot, a lot of the times as well when, uh, when you read these websites about no, no spanking, they generally have this philosophy of, you know, it's not about the punishment, it's about educating your child. But then therefore, you know, timeouts and therefore like removing privileges. What do they think these are? I mean, these are punishments. It's just a different form of punishment. So you can't, it's a bit hypo hypo hypocritical to me for somebody to say, well, we ought to have a no punishment philosophy, yet when my child misbehaves, I'm going to stick them in timeout. You know, because that is a punishment. So it's a bit hypocritical for them to say, well, we don't believe it, it's a no punishment philosophy. When they actually are punishing their child, they're just punishing them different ways. Um, so what are the alternatives to spanking? There really, there really isn't that many. Um, you know, so obviously for us, spanking is in, you know, you're inflicting a physical pain. That's one thing you can do to punish your child. You can inflict physical pain, you know, whether you do it with a belt, or whether you do it with a rod, or whether you do it with a, you know, a stick like I showed you last week, or whether you do it with your hand, you know, this is what would be deemed as corporal punishment. We talked about last week, the, the benefits of using a rod over your hand. And, and you know, I wouldn't use a belt. I didn't mention this last week when talking about implements. Um, a lot of people spank with a belt. Um, you know, I have tried spanking with a belt. I would recommend, not, I would definitely re recommend you don't do it with the buckle of the belt. Like I've heard of people saying, you know, they got spanked when they were a kid and their parents would use the buckle of the belt. Like to, to me, that is borderline assault because you're not, you, 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 can, you can cause a lot of damage whipping a child with the blunt end of that, of that, um, of the belt. And especially if you're spanking your child not on the skin, you have to hit pretty hard with a belt to get that whip for it to actually sting them to the same effect of stinging them with a rod or, or with a spatula. So I would not recommend to you um, that you use a belt just because a belt is limp. It is not, it is not hard. So when you slap, um, you have to hit, if you think about a whip, you have to, you have to hit them quite skillfully with, with something that is floppy to to slap them the right way and, and to, to accurately hit them. Whereas when you have a rod, it's hard, so it's a lot easier to accurately hit them in the spot you want to hit them. And you, know, you, you have to apply less force in order to create the same amount of sting. So I would not recommend a belt. I would recommend a rod, like the Bible says, and, and use something that gives them a sting rather than um, you know, causes more damage to the bone and to the muscle. Uh, Okay, so that's, that's what we do. So, so we, we apply physical pain. That's what spanking is. Now, a, le a legitimate alternative to this, uh, legitimate meaning it is actually a form of punishment. punishment illegitimate, it's an illegitimate form of punishment because it's not biblical. But um, another, another way to punish your child would be to remove a privilege, right? So that could be in the form of, you know, getting grounded, you know, like you're not allowed to leave your room or something. Um, ban a certain activity, you know, maybe you turn the PlayStation off or you take away their Game Boy or take away, do they still sell Game Boys? Or is the Game, the Game Boys, or is it the DS now, isn't it? Nintendo DS. Take away their DS or whatever, or the iPad. Uh, you might put them in a timeout so they have to sit still for a certain period of time or you restrict their freedom, uh, you restrain movement. Um, or you might take money or take belongings from them. I will put all these into the same category. You're basically removing something, a privilege that they had, and now they don't have it. And that's um, the, the punishment that you're inflicting. Now, um, another alternative is you might assign an additional task, right? So you've got, an old, you've got spanking, you've got removing a privilege. Maybe you might assign them an additional task as a punishment. So you might give them a chore or a job to do. Like Now, this, I believe, this only works with older children because if you're going to punish, like Sarah, 
you can't kind of tell Sarah, well, as a punishment, now you're going to clean the dishes. Or, you know, now as a punishment, you're going to mow the lawn or something. I mean, it, you know, she's not even going to know how to do that. So how can I inflict that as a punishment on a child that cannot do those things? So this could possibly work for older children, you know, and as a punishment, they may need to, to mow the lawn or they may need to wash the car or something like that. And that may be, when they're older, a more effective punishment for them than a spanking because it lasts longer, you know, and it's actually work they need to do as opposed to, you know, even now, like if I, I, if, if I was to consider getting like 10 spankings or washing a car, I think I'd rather get the spankings, you know, I'd be too lazy to wash the car, you know, from, from, a, from an older person's point of view. Um, so that's another alternative to, to spanking would be to you give them a job to do as a punishment. Now here are some alternatives that I think are bad forms of punishment. Like the, uh, to me, they're, they're not even really punishments. But when you read these websites, they sort of list them as punishments. But to me, they're not, they're not really punishments. One is that you just comply, right? So you provide them, you know, they're complaining because they don't get that toy and you just comply and just give them what they want. You provide their needs. Um, to me, I mean, that's not really a punishment. It's not really an alternative. But as I go through these websites later and list you, you'll see that people actually think that these are alternatives to punishment. You just comply. You give them what they want. You keep them happy, happy so that there is no chance for misbehavior. Or you might like, you know, childproof your house. So you don't want your children to not touch anything. So you just, take, just to totally take it out of the living room and lock everything away. Or, you know, you don't want children climbing up on things. So, you know, it's like at Ikea, right? When you, when you look at the bunk beds, they put like that plastic thing on it so they can't climb on it and, and just totally childproof your house. So if you just make it impossible for them to misbehave, you know, and just put them in a padded room. Um, that's not really a, an alternative to a punishment. You know, that's just um, putting them in a bubble or keeping them happy, keeping them uh, uh, so happy that they don't have a chance to misbehave. Uh, another one is that you just do nothing. Um, so some people think this is an alternative to punishment where if they're misbehaving, you just ignore it. Now, to me, that's just the lazy parent's way out. Now, they may say, you're, well, you're just ignoring minor misbehavior because obviously if your child is tantruming on the floor and screaming and carrying about, you can't just ignore that behavior, right? You can't just ignore that and just let them possibly hurt themselves or hit their head against the wall or throw themselves down or things like that. So you can't just ignore that. So they'll say, ignore minor behavior, but then that's a punishment where you can't really keep a high standard, right? Because if you wanted a high standard for your children, you can't just do nothing when they're misbehaving and doing small things. You want to correct that as well. Uh, another thing that they say is a, as a punishment, as an alternative to spanking, is that you just distract them. So if they're misbehaving, you know, you've taken a toy from them because they're not using that right, and now they're misbehaving, you distract them by giving them something else. You stick them in front of the TV. You stick them in front of the iPad. You give them another toy to play with. So now that they're happy again, and they're not complaining about that privilege that was removed from them. Um, now the problem with just distracting your child is you may end up indirectly um, rewarding them. You know, they've just played up. You know, you've taken something from them, they're complaining, they're playing up now, and now they've given us something else to play. It's all, well, oh, I'll just play up and I'll get something else. I'll play up, you know, I play up. Um, you know, my mum tells me, well, if I don't eat my food, I have, I have to go to my room. Hey, well, that's, that's great, you know, like, oh, if I do something else. Um, it's not really a form of punishment. It's not really getting them to do what you want them to do. Um, and, and it's not even addressing the problem. You know, because if you just distract them, the problem is how they're behaving, their attitude uh, when, they've, when you've taken away that privilege from them or you've taken something or you've asked them to do something and if you just give them something else to do, you haven't actually addressed the problem when you're just distracting them with something else. Now, the other ways you can punish your children um, that I, I would call bad forms of punishment is maybe a psychological punishment. So you may have a punishment where you inflict some sort of psychological pain on them, either you humiliate them in front of people, you humiliate them in front of their friends, uh, you do something that doesn't really inflict any pain or remove a privilege but just embarrasses them. Um, you may uh, do something that, like you might just lie to them, you know, like scare them with something that isn't even really true. Or, um, or you might just abandon them, you know, you might just leave them alone, which, which I would say is the equivalent not necessarily the equivalent of doing nothing because you might still be there, but you might just leave them to be and just um, pretend like you, you have left them. So, you know, there are, there are different alternatives. Some, um, you know, obviously that are, that are better than others, but I, I don't think any of them comes close to spanking. Some of them that, that, that I believe are actually bad 
and you should not even um, implement in your home. Now, there are some factors that we all agree on. And, and I sort of alluded to this when I was talking about the straw man of, you know, the spanking versus removing privileges and educating. Because the real situation is we spank, but we also educate our children. And that is something we do agree on. We do agree on education. Meaning, when you discipline your children, you do need to teach them what's right, explain to them why it was wrong, tell them, hey, if they do it again, they're going to get this, and, and so forth, so on and so, so forth. So all scenarios would require this, because no punishment is effective without the children knowing that you love them, without them knowing why they did wrong, what they did wrong, that if they do it again, they, they, you know, those sorts of things. So all scenarios require um, us as parents to explain and educate our children. And you know, honestly, I'm, I'm amazed. I'm just going to go to Deuteronomy 6. <coughs> but you know, I, I'm honestly sometimes amazed at um, what Simon takes away, you know, when I explain something to him. You know, and I might just give him a simple explanation or just teach him something really simple. And at the time, I'm thinking he's not really paying attention. But then later on, he will then, re, uh, he will then restate that to Elizabeth. So he was actually listening at that time. And I just sort of mentioned to it him in passing and just saying, hey, you know, you shouldn't do that because of this. And then he'll know later, oh, that's why I shouldn't do it. And I, I didn't even really think he was listening. And this is why it's so important that children are part of the congregation here. And this is why we don't have children's church. We don't separate the kids off. Because even though you think they're not paying attention, they may be scribbling in their book or they may be playing with a toy. They are listening. They hear things. And, and they will soak it in and they will hear things and they will hear that and they will repeat that to you later. You'll be amazed at how often it happens. So, you know, I may have just mentioned it in passing, but he was actually paying attention. So what I would encourage you to do is, you know, and, and this is what the Bible actually exhorts us to do too. Let's read this from Deuteronomy 6. It says here, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not. And he goes on and goes on. He says, he says here in verse 12, Then beware lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So God here is exhorting us to just constantly be talking about the Bible, to constantly be teaching our children when we lie down, when we rise up, all the time. So you don't necessarily, I'm not against necessarily having, you know, a set time where you go and you have time with your children and, and you teach them things, but that shouldn't be all there is. You know, you, there needs to be more than that. You can have your set times to teach them. So don't get this idea that you need to necessarily just sit your children down at a time and just teach them everything. No, it's just all the time when you rise up, you know, when they do something, you explain to them and you, and you give them verses and you just explain things all the time and you'll be amazed at how much they actually uh, soak in. So when you're with your kids, I just explain everything. Like sometimes when I'm with my kids and we're out and about, I'll just explain things. Like, you know, we're at Coles and you know, I'll explain to them, you know, why, you know, I'll explain to them a bit about market, market, free market capitalism and things like that. Or maybe we're down at the, the government office and we'll talk about, oh, you know, government runs these things and ruins everything. And, and you know, maybe I'm explaining it in a way that's totally going over their head, but, you know, I don't know what's going to stick. You know, so I'm just going to explain it and just keep explaining it. You know, when we, when we talk about babies, I explain it to them. When we talk about family, we explain it to them. When we talk about the Bible, I explain it to them. Sometimes when I'm brushing Simon's teeth, you know, because like, I, I brush their teeth and, you know, they're sort of leaned over my, my leg, right, and I'm brushing their teeth. I just explain things to him. Sometimes I'll just preach the gospel to him and just remind him, you know, this is why, why you have to believe on Jesus, Simon. You have to believe on him because he's died for you and quote some scripture passages. Because he's got no choice but to listen, right? He's getting his teeth brushed. It's gonna just, it's just gonna lie there and just listen to it. So, you know, just take every opportunity you get just to explain things, um, and you'll be amazed at how much sticks with them. So, um, and the other thing is, so we all agree on that. We all agree on education, but we also all agree that we ought to have the right attitude. 
right? We have the right attitude. You know, we don't spank when we're angry. We talked about this last week. We don't spank when we're angry. We need to make sure we're calm. You know, spank early so that you don't spank um, too harshly. Uh, so, so these are things that we all agree on. Like anyone that's disciplining their child and raising their children, we all agree education, the right attitude, um, and things like that. We just disagree on the method and how effective. Is it applying pain? Is it removing a privilege? Or is it assigning a chore, which really only works for older children? So that's why you really only have these two camps. Either you're spanking them, either, either you're applying pain, or you're removing a privilege whatever that privilege is. So th those are the two I'm going to compare uh, when, when, I, when I talk about these things. But I, I wanted to just go through, I, I have, you know, when, when I wanted to, sort of, when I was preparing this sermon, I was just looking up websites to see what, are, what, what is the world teaching? Like what is the world really giving as alternatives? If, if a parent really does not want to spank and they Google, well, alternatives to spanking, what websites are they going to get and what are those websites going to tell them? And as I go through these, you'll just see that these websites are just, they're a joke. They, they, they claim to have all these different alternatives for spanking, but really all they have is removing privileges um, when it comes down to it. So this one is from positiveparenting.com. So I would think that if it's a URL like that, that they're probably thinking they're an authority, uh, author, uh, an authority when it comes to what's known as positive parenting, positive only parenting. You know, no, don't say no to your children, nothing negative, no punishments. It's just about reinforcing good behavior as opposed to um, punishing bad behavior. So they have nine things to do instead of spanking. So let, let's see what those are. So number one is get calm. Now, does anyone disagree with that? Yeah, you, I mean, you should be calm, right? I mean, you should be calm when you discipline your children. Nobody's disagreeing with that. But is that an alternative to spanking? You see how that's not an alternative. That's something you should do while you punish. That's, that's not like them. They're, they're saying that they've got nine things that are alternatives to spanking. So you think, oh, wow, there's like, there's all these different things I can do besides spanking my children. And then you actually read down the list and the first one is just to get calm. So that's an attitude. Number two, take time for yourself. Now, how, how is that an alternative to punishment? Like, so, so your child is acting up. You're about to punish it. So you just go take time for yourself. I mean, sure, you know, take time for yourself. You get calm. You see how I mean? Like, this is attitude. This is not actually an alternative to what you are going to inflict to the child to punish their bad behavior. Number three for them, be kind but firm. So let's say you are kind but firm and you say, don't do this, and then they do it. Do you just keep being kind and firm? So you see how it's not an alternative. It's not an alternative to a punishment. Again, this is just an attitude. It's just a mindset in how you parent. And this is why... You know, it's already three. So we're down to six now. There's six alternatives left because those are not really alternatives. Number four is give choices. So they're saying that instead of spanking them, you say, well, you know, they're not eating their food. You say, eat their food. You give choices saying, well, are you going to eat your food or are you going to leave the table? Well, obviously the child's going to leave the table, right? So how do you get them to eat their food? And if they say no, like how is giving them a choice going to punish them? Do you see what I mean? So again, this is, this is um, really just complying. I, 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 I'm trying to like categorize what this is, but to me, giving, giving them choices, I don't even see how they even thought that's an alternative to punishment. Use logical consequences. So to them, that's saying, well, just explain that, you know, if they do such and such, you know, if they don't eat, they're going to get hungry. So you explain that to a child, they still don't want to eat. Now what? Like, do you just ex keep explaining it to them and just hope to reason with a one-year-old, reason with a two-year-old? So you see how it's not really a punishment for disobeying you um, because educating them is not a punishment. Um, it's not an alternative to spanking. Uh, now, number five is to do makeup tasks. So that's where, you know, that would be a punishment, an alternative punishment, where they say if they didn't do things, then um, give them a job to do as a punishment. But again, that doesn't work for younger children. You can't, you know, you can't have Sarah, you can't have a two-year-old and give them a chore. What chore are you going to give Sarah <laughs> as a punishment? That, you know, you tell her, all right, Sarah, as a punishment, you're going to pick up your toys. And she doesn't pick up your toys. It's like, how am I going to get her to pick up? Do I give, it, do I give her another chore? Or how, how am I going to punish her now if she's not going to do the thing that is her punishment? You know? So that's number five. Number six, right, six number seven, they say an alternative to punishment is you withdraw from the conflict. 
withdraw from the conflict. So basically you do nothing. You just go to another room and just take yourself away from it. That's not an alternative. That's just doing nothing, you know, and um, taking time for yourself. Uh, use kind but firm action. I think that was the same as point three. So they're just doubling up now. Um, and number nine is inform children ahead of time. So you tell them before you punish them, hey, if you do that, you're going to get punished. But again, how is that an alternative to punishment? You know, you're just telling them what the punishment is going to be, but then the punishment can't be letting them know ahead of time that you're going to let them know ahead of time. So you let them know ahead of time and then they don't do it. So then you let them know ahead of time. Like you see how it's, it's not an alternative. And I know I'm sort of repeating myself, but I'm just trying to drive this point home that these websites try and say nine alternatives to spanking and they're not alternatives. They're just parenting applications that every parent should do, but are not actually an alternative to punishment. This one was from the Huffington Post. This was um, one, two, three, eight alternatives to punishment. Number one, give your kid a timeout. Okay, so that's sitting them in the corner. And I think it was this website that said literally, like just sit them down for one minute or something. Start with one minute. And I'm just thinking like, what sort of punishment is that? One minute? Like Simon could sit like for one minute easy. No problem. Like he could sit for one minute and after that one minute, he's just going to be exactly the same. All right, he's going to go sit and he's going to... So, um, you know, I'm obviously against timeout. I think timeouts are silly. They take a lot of time. And I'll go into that a bit later. So that's number one. Give your kid a timeout. But number two, this, 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 this is the alternative to spanking. Number two, give yourself a timeout. How is, that, how, is that, how is that a punishment for your kid? So your kid plays up, so then you go in timeout. Like, how is that a fun? Huh. Number three, implement logical consequences. So we already talked about that one, education. So th these websites kind of repeat themselves. Number four, say no and mean it. Now, how is that an alternative to spanking? I mean, you're, you're, you're thinking about a, a spanking or a punishment because you've already said no and meant it, and now you're trying to implement a, a punishment. So how is what you did the punishment? So say no and mean it. You, look at this one. Use the, use the clap growl. So if you don't know what the clap growl is, it's like, no, don't do that. So you like, treat them like a dog, right? Because that's how they tell you to train dogs, right? You use the clap growl, like you clap really loud and you say no. And I even saw one website saying, you, you clap growl, you say no, and then you do the turn away and look back, like you turn away and you look back and you go, no. You know, to make it like really dramatic. So to me, this is, this is not really an alternative to punishment because it's just, it's just attitude, right? They're just telling you how to deal with your children. You know, you, you use kind but firm, logical consequences, educating them. You know, maybe you need to raise your voice. That's pretty much what the clap growl is, right? With the, with the clap, um, you raise your voice. Number six on this list, show, don't tell. So again, not an alternative to a punishment just to educate them. That's just saying like when you explain it to them, don't just explain it to them. Don't just say, you know, put this book on the shelf. You show them and say, hey, this is how I want you to put the book. You know, you put it like this. Now you do it and then they do it. And then you say, that's how I want you to do it. Now if you don't do it that way, then you're going to get punished. But me showing you how to do it is not the punishment. Do you see? Um, show, don't tell. Focus on the positive. See, to me, this is not even dealing with the problem. So they're, they're, they're tantruming on the floor. How do you focus, do you focus on the positive? It's, you've got a really nice, loud voice, Simon. You know, you've got a <laughs> really energetic. Like how, do you know what I mean? Like the, some of these, these websites, you read them, you just like, honestly, I don't know how people believe this stuff. Um, and number eight on this list is you outlast the child. So they give you seven methods that are not really methods. And then their last point is just do it longer than the child will. Man, no wonder parents are going crazy doing these methods, right? Because you, they give them methods that are not really methods. They give them alternatives to punishment that are not punishments. So the child is not even being punished at all. And then they tell them to outlast the child. No wonder you read these websites, you read the comments below and it's just like, oh, I cannot keep my child under control. I don't know how you guys do this. I don't know how they do it either. You know, to be honest, I, you know, maybe they're just you know, one person on the blog you know, saying, I'll oh, do all these things, but at home, you know, they're like the preacher, right? You hear all these preachers talking about being holy and not committing adultery, not committing homosexuality. I just like watched this one video on Ted Haggard where he was preaching against homosexuality and then he was paying some male prostitute to have sex with, you know? 
Maybe it's like these with these positive parenting people. They're like in the closet about actually spanking their child and then on their blog, they're all positive and you know, no punishment. But then at home, they actually you know, are punishing them. And it's funny that even parents that use timeouts and things like that, like they're against using physical force, but when their child won't sit in their seat, they're like, sit in the damn seat! And they're like squeezing their arms and actually hurting the child because the child won't do what they're asking them to do. <clears throat> so all of us, at some point have to use some sort of physical restraint otherwise the child won't do what we want them to do this is site number three so this one was um one two three four eight alternatives first one was time out second one was take away privileges so we already talked about that one number three was ignore mild behavior so again that's just doing nothing number four teach new skills so again that's not a punishment that's just education number five Logical consequences, again, education. Uh, number six is natural consequences. So this is like if you're, if, so the difference between logical consequences and natural consequences, there are logical consequences saying, I'm telling Simon, hey, if you touch that, you're gonna get spanked. So that's like the logical consequence. Natural consequence is he's climbing up on something and then I just, you know, just let him fall off, right? It's so that he falls and then he learns from his own mistake. Hey, I agree with that. You know, but see, that's, that's just him just learning from his own mistakes. That's not a punishment. Do you know what I mean? Like the punishment, like if I let him climb on the chair, because I don't mind him climbing on chairs, and in order for him to learn to be careful, he falls off and hurts himself, I'm fine with that. That's not a punishment. But it's different if I say, hey, you know what? Like I, you know, you, I don't want you to be on the chair. Get off the chair. And he doesn't get off the chair. Even if he falls and hurts himself, I still think he, requ he requires punishment because he's disobeyed me as well. So that's uh, natural consequences. Um, seven is reward systems. So rewarding good behavior. But again, nobody's against rewards. If, if a child is well behaved, you would reward the child. But what do you do when they're misbehaved? You can't reward them. So you see how rewarding is not an alternative to a punishment, to a spanking. Or you praise them and again. So these are, these are different attitudes. These are different ways that we ought to parent. We ought to praise our children. We ought to encourage them and, and, and reward them for well-doing. We ought to allow them to learn natural consequences. But this is not an alternative to punishment. Now, I'll go, I'll go through some. These ones were, were 22 alternatives. I'm not going to go through all of them. But I'll put the link on the website if you want to see them. But I'll just go through some of them. Because it's all pretty much the same. Like, you know, I'll go through them quickly. Like, one is like you prevent unwanted behavior by meeting your child's needs, which is basically just complying and making sure. So I've already sort of gone through. Number two was um, just providing them a safe environment so they can't hurt themselves. So you don't even let them be naughty. Uh, you number three is you apply the golden rule. Think about how you would want to be treated and treat them the same way. So you see again, this website is sort of palming it off as, hey, there's all these alternatives to spanking, 22 alternatives, and the first three are not really alternatives again. And number three is just, a, it's just an attitude of treat your children the way you would want to be treated, the golden rule. Um, show empathy for your child's feelings. Again, that's an, that's an attitude. Validate your child's feelings so she knows that you're, un so that she or he knows that you understand and care. Meet the underlying need that led to the behavior. Now that one's dangerous because if the underlying need was they were hungry and they're playing up a bit, yeah, fair enough. You know, if they're hungry and that makes them a bit more irritable, hey, to me that still does not, you know, in my house, even if they're hungry or even if they're tired, if they play up, I'm still pretty strict with them. You know, with the younger children, I would allow that. But if Simon is tired and he's playing up, that doesn't give him um, a free ticket to disobey daddy. He still needs to obey daddy. It's fine if he's tired, but he can't have a bad attitude. Um, you know, or, or you're just giving what they want. Because what if the underlying reason why they're, they're playing up is because they want this toy? You're not just going to give them what they need to get rid of it, you know, so you're not just going to comply. Uh, whenever possible, find a win-win solution that meets everyone's need. Again, you're just complying to, to the child's request. Reassure your child that he is loved and appreciated. That's just attitude. Shift the focus away from a situation that has become too stressful. So just distract them with something else. Is that an alternative? Be sure that you and your child have had nutritious food throughout the day. Okay, so feed your child. I don't think, I don't think anyone like who spanks is not feeding their children, you know? 
Um, breathe when stressed, so that's for you, be calm. We don't expect a car to start unless the ga gas is tank is full. So this is another one is saying like, you know, make sure your child's emotional needs are met. That's again, the right attitude as a parent. Chamomile tea is very relaxing for both adults and children. So, so your child plays up, you give them chamomile tea as, a, as an alternative. Uh, take a time out, take a time out with your child. So this one is you take a time out together um, as a punishment. Pick a parenting card for inspiration and, and encouragement or create some of your own reminder cards. So again, this is attitude. You don't like punish your child by picking, by picking a parenting card. This one, this one made me lose it. Offer a massage. Offer a ma if a massage is an alternative to a punishment, man, correct me all day long. You know, I, I don't mind getting corrected if the correction is a, is a massage. A bedtime massage can help a child to sleep more soundly. I mean, honestly, is this an alternative to a punishment? Give choices, try whispering, give your child time, give yourself time. Remember that children create images from our words, so it's saying use certain words so that children understand you. The last one is, I don't even know how she included this and counted it. You know, you, if you were honest, you'd say 21 alternatives, because the last one is just ask yourself, will I look back at this later and laugh? If so, why not laugh now? So, you know, you, you're recognizing how silly the situation is, and then you're just saying, oh, just laugh about it. Don't do anything about it, just laugh about it. So you see how these websites, and, and I'm sure you, you go, these were like the top ones I just looked at when I looked, I just Googled alternatives to spanking. And you see the headline, the headline is almost a bit deceptive, right? Nine alternatives to spanking, eight alternatives to spanking, 22 alternatives to spanking, and it's just parenting philosophies. It's not even alternative punishments. Because to be honest, there isn't really that many. You know, that's why, when, remember when we went through all the different Bible punishments? There's not that many punishments, because how, what, what can you really do to a person? You either take something from them, you inflict pain, or you get them to do something. You know, it's just that there may be different methods in which you inflict pain. You know, there might be the death penalty, a beating, fire. You know, you might take different things from them, whether they have to restore fourfold or you find them or something like that, or they have to sell themselves into slavery, whatnot. There's not that many things you can do. And that's why people saying that there are all these different alternatives are just either have deceived themselves or just lying to people. So let's just quickly talk about the alternatives to spanking. Uh, oh, sorry, not the alternatives, we just talked about that. The, the advantages to spanking that the alternatives cannot do. So when you go and talk to people and you say you compare spanking to removing privileges, you can at least say, hey, this is why spanking is better, even if the, even if the Bible didn't say it was better. You know? But the Bible does say it's better and that's why it is better. But number one, I've got a few thoughts here for you. Number one is it's quick. So when you spank your child, it's quick, meaning... You, sp you punish them, it's over and done within maybe 30 seconds. The relationship is restored much faster. Now imagine if you're trying to time out a kid. You time them out for, for a couple of minutes. Now there's those few minutes that have to go past. And if they don't do it properly, then it's even more minutes. Or like say you ground your child, you ground them for a day, right? They can't use their iPad for a day. Now they're going to be upset with you all day because all day they've, th you've taken away that privilege. Whereas when you spank them, it's really quick. And then you can go, you can move on, the relationship is restored and you, can, and you can get on with your life. Number one, it's quick. Number two, you can bless and punish at the same time. So think about it, right? With a younger child, you can't really give them a chore. So you can only really remove a privilege. But let's say, for example, removing that privilege is, oh, they don't, have, they don't get to eat ice cream with everybody after dinner. You know, that's their punishment. They didn't, they didn't obey, or they didn't eat their food quick enough, or whatever it is. So um, now, now everyone else gets to eat ice cream, and they just watch everyone eat ice cream, and they don't get to eat ice cream. Now, that could, that could be a punishment. I'm not saying that I don't necessarily do those things in my house sometimes. But if I don't have spanking in my arsenal, then that would mean I have to take away that blessing in order to punish them. But when I have spanking in my arsenal, I can still give them the ice cream. You know, I can still bless my child because I want to, you know, let's say, you know, you're taking your child to a party, you know, like let's say older, older kids and you might punish them by, you know, saying they can't go to that party. Whereas if you give them a spanking, they're punished, but you can still give them that blessing. They can still and go and, and have that fun and, and you don't have to remove that um, that experience from them. 
So you can bless and punish at the same time. You can give them the privilege that would otherwise need to be removed. Now, number three is spanking is very effective. It's effective, especially for young people. So behavior changes faster because pain is a stronger deterrent, especially for younger children. Like I said with my children, if they had to sit in a corner for two minutes or get a spanking, they would definitely prefer to sit in the corner for two minutes than get a spanking. So a spanking is a lot more effective for younger children um, because pain is a big deterrent. Um, in terms of it being effective, they need to want what you're taking from them. So let's say they don't want what you, you've taken away a privilege, but then they don't want it. Then how is that a punishment? You know, you take away the iPad, they just go find another toy. So you're eventually going to just take away everything. Well, what happens when you've taken away everything and they're still misbehaving? What are you going to do? You've got nothing left to take away. You know, you're going to lock them in their room for hours and hours and hours until they obey? Or are you just going to spank them? Because no child um, likes pain. I mean, you think about, for those of you who have young children, or have seen young children, when they graze their leg, and they literally have like the smallest cut, but they will, they will just cry and cry like crazy because they hate pain. Children really, really do not like pain. That's why it's so effective. Um, what do you do when you've taken everything away? If it's, a, if it's effective as a last resort, because you know, some people, they're not necessarily against spanking, but they just use it as a last resort. They just say, well, I'm going to try and do all these alternatives. I'm going to take away all the privileges. I'm going to give them a timeout. And if they still don't obey, then I'm going to spank them. But then my thought is, well, if it's effective as a last resort, well, that means it's effective as a, as a first resort as well. Because obviously, if it's everyone's last resort that they go to because it's that effective, then it's going to be effective as a first resort too. And then you don't have to go down that rigmarole of doing all these different things and then finally spanking them. Just spank them. It's over and done with. It's dealt with. So it's a lot quicker. And you don't have to bring them through this torture process as opposed to just spanking them. And it's over in a couple of seconds. Um, and it's another thing about it being effective. So it's effective as a last resort, why not a first resort? It has the ability to punish a behavior that can be still done whilst an alternative punishment is being applied. So you, you say you're going to sit in that timeout, but then if they don't actually comply with that timeout, then what do you do? You know, so, so removing of the privilege, getting them to sit requires compliance from the child. But then that's what you're punishing them for. You're punishing them because they're not willing to comply. So what makes you think they're going to comply when you say, go and sit over in the corner? You know, they're not necessarily going to apply. So then what do you do? Uh, or, you know, what if they actually need to do something? A timeout's not going to work. Like, what if, what if a child needs to actually sit through church? And that's what you're trying, trying to teach your child. But if your punishment is a timeout, that's what they want. Right? They want to get out of church. They want to get out of what they don't want to do and go sit somewhere else. You know, you're telling them to eat their food and your punishment is a timeout. That's what they want. They don't want to be at the table. They don't want to eat their food. They, they, they're going to go away. So you're actually giving them what they want instead of having a way to actually force them to eat the food and inflict something that would, you know, that is negative to encourage them to eat the food. So quick, you can bless and punish at the same time. It's effective. Number four, it's easier. So because spanking is easier than all these other methods where you have to like, you know, you have all these different techniques and, and, and take a lot more time, um, more parents will do it. So that's, that I think is an advantage, is if, if spanking is quick, it's effective, and it's easier, more parents will do it and we'll have less bratty kids um, running around. Uh, it's, and because it's easier, you can do it with a lot of kids. You know, you can't... You know, people that do these timeout methods, they don't have a lot of kids. You don't see parents with nine, ten kids doing timeout. Why? Because it would just take all day, you get nothing else done, trying to time out all these kids all the time. So most families, or every family that I know has a lot of kids, you know, most of them I guess are Bible-believing families anyway, um, they spank because otherwise it would be impossible to keep your house in order. Um, when it comes to it being easier as well, so more parents will spank because it's easier, it's possible with lots of kids, it's, com it's convenient um, because it can be done anywhere, because it's quick. You know, how do you do a timeout when you're out and about? You need somewhere that you can sit the child um, as opposed to just bringing them to your car and spanking them uh, when you don't have the time or place to administer a timeout. Like let's say you, you have to go to an appointment and your child is not putting on their shoes or they're not getting changed, they're playing up. 
do you have the time to administer a timeout? You know, if your timeout is five, 10 minutes, you need to leave now. You know, so you could give them a spanking, they do what they need to do, you get them out the door and you go to your appointment. Um, easier. So uh, another one is you can start earlier. So before a child even understands reasoning, young children don't like pain. You know, cause some, some children, when they're young, they don't even understand why they're sitting in the corner. You know, but then they don't like pain. They can associate pain with what they've done, but they may not associate just sitting off in the corner with what they've done because they just think mum is no longer there. Um, so you can set the standard at an earlier age, which eliminates major issues when the children are older. Now, the last one I've got here is just the philosophical advantage of, of a spanking. So we've got, it's quick, you can bless and punish at the same time. It's a more effective. It's easier, you can start earlier. Now the philosophical side is, you know, number one, you've got that there's no sense of abandonment. So a lot of, there, there are actually studies out there and articles, you can look them up, that discourage timeouts where the child is left alone. So that's why they'll say, do something where you're, you're together with the child, right? Because they say, well, well if you just leave the child alone, you're punish, punishing them and now they're, They've learnt that when times get hard and they do something wrong, mom and dad don't want to be with them. As opposed to spanking, spanking you are present. You don't abandon them. You are there, you are correcting them, you, you, you console them after they've received their punishment and, um, and you're always there. So there's, no, there's not this sense of the parent being absent when they go through this punishment. You are there with them. It's kind of like David says, you know, in Psalm 23, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. You know, the chastisement of the Lord gives us comfort that we know God is actually there. He's, he's looking out for us. He's correcting us when we go astray. Number two, it's the authority as well. Because when you sit a kid in a timeout, generally you'll sit them there and you'll say, when you're finished, come back. So you see how the philosophy is when you're ready to behave, you come back to the situation. Whereas the spanking says, no, it's not when you're ready to behave. I want you to behave now. So there's an authority issue there where when you spank, you're saying, no, no, you do what daddy says. Daddy's not waiting for you to do what you want to do. You see? So I think there's a philosophical advantage of, of being able to inflict pain so that you can get them to do what you want them to do. Um, number three is, you know, um, is it should reflect God's judicial punishment. So we talked about this when we talked about the laws. You know, we don't believe prisons are biblical. So that's why a timeout is following this philosophy of locking somebody away and doing the time as opposed to a beating or a fine, something that just deals with the problem. Um, so the way we discipline our children, it ought to reflect judicial punishments so that we can also teach them a milder form of how the government should be dealing with people. And the last one is when you can inflict pain as a parent, it does create a healthy fear and reverence from your children. Like the Bible says in Hebrews that, you know, we have fathers that chastise us and we gave them reverence. Shall we not be uh, subject to the father of lights and live? So again, there's a philosophical advantage as Bible believing Christians, because we do want our children to fear us. Don't buy into this lie that fear is bad, that reverence is bad, that you need to be friends with your children. No, we ought to inflict a punishment that encourages them to fear and reverence their parents so then they, from a young age, hold a respect to the position that um, God has put you in as their parents. Um, now, when it comes to disadvantages, really, really when it comes to disadvantages with spanking is if you do it incorrectly. You know, if you do it incorrectly, and it's funny, when I think about, you know, the disadvantages when it comes to spanking, I, I think about the IT desk at work where, you know, sometimes you'll have a problem with your computer and then you ring them up and, you know, they do something for you and then they realize, uh, you know, they'll ask you, is the problem sitting in front of the keyboard? <laughs> and it's like, oh yeah, it is because like, I didn't do the right thing. So sometimes it's like that with spanking. The only, the only disadvantage to spanking is if, you, is if you do it incorrectly. Now, if you do it with the wrong attitude, you might spank them the wrong way. Or you, you use the wrong implement. You might hurt the child. So that's why it's really important. Spanking is very effective if you use it the right way. It's a bit like a tool, right? Like a knife. If you use a knife the right way, it, it does the job. But it can also be very dangerous. So we need to be careful as parents how we spank, when we spank, 
how hard we spank, these sorts of things, because whilst spanking is effective, it can go over to abuse, and that really is the disadvantage to spanking that they push. But that doesn't mean that all spanking is bad. And that's why you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. So if done wrong, it can lead to injury. And if done wrong, it can lead to bitterness. But generally, these are the people that are not having the right attitude, they're not educating their children, and they're not using the right instrument. So there are no issues if it's administered correctly. So I hope that gives you a couple of thoughts there just on the alternatives and advantages um, to corporal punishment.